What's going on Fritz fam? Today we have a special treat for you. We are at the Kansas City Zoo and Aquarium with Alex who and they just opened up this facility in September of 2023. So it's brand new. Yep, brand new. 600,000 gallons in here. And we're about to do an exclusive walkthrough. Alex and I will be stopping talking about some of the marine life from a giant green moray eel to a sand tiger shark green sea turtles and a monkey face prickleback. You're going to be able to see this in this film today. We're going to show you all that here at the Kansas City Zoo and Aquarium. Let's go. All right. So the mangrove exhibit here, the shorebird exhibit and the sea turtle exhibit all share the same water. Okay. Um, they're about 70,000 gallons all together in addition with some of the other habitats in the back. And is that something you prefer or it becomes a bit complicated for treating certain fish in different habitats or would you always remove that fish into a type of quarantine before treatment? Yeah, if we have to treat an individual animal, we're definitely going to move it to an off exhibit holding tank. Right. From a biosecurity standpoint, there are definitely pros and cons to having multiple systems connected together. Mm -hmm. For moving animals around, it actually, it makes it pretty easy if we have to move one animal you know, from our, our Sandy Shore exhibit to the mangrove tank um, because the parameters are the exact same. Um, well, this is very cool. You have this little cylinder exhibit, which I see right away. Uh, you've got some interesting looking jellyfish. And if I remember correctly, this is a poisonous jellyfish, right? They are not. They're not? Um, okay. They're not poisonous. They, they do have a little bit of a sting and they can um, secrete their nematocysts and their mucus. So when they're really agitated, you'll see like strings of mucus coming off of them. And so these are Cassiopeia polyps. Cassiopeia are the upside down jellyfish in here. These are one life stage of the jellyfish. They'll eventually go through a process called strobilation where they'll release medusa. Um, when they're strobilating, you'll see it'll look like a stack of a bunch of little discs. Mm -hmm. And then each disc will sort of pop off and that'll be a brand new jellyfish. These are probably the most home aquarium friendly species of jellyfish because their flow requirements are, they're not as demanding as pelagic jellyfish like nettles and, and moons. They will get up and swim around occasionally. They're photosynthetic. We also offer them food. So we feed them artemia that we hatch out every day. Okay. Is this about full size for these? Pretty close, yeah. They might get a little bit bigger. So he is a massive, massive eel. Um, that's his little home. He really, really likes living in that pipe. Every time we move it, he just follows it around. And that's something that if you were an at-home hobbyist, you would definitely want to mix that in with the moray eel's habitat is like a, a pipe of some sort or some sort of tunnel where they can kind of take shelter and call that home. Yeah, absolutely. It's very important for the eels to feel safe and secure. This is not going to fit in the home aquarium. No, definitely And it really not. shouldn't be attempted. That is something that you want to try to avoid as a hobbyist, is you really want to look at the max length. You want this to be nice and comfortable, not switching home to home, aquarium to aquarium. So it's my advice to you, Fritz fam, to look at the overall adult size of your fish and buy an aquarium that's appropriate for the full growth of the animal. This is the most massive of the exhibits right here, correct? Oh, this one doesn't connect in over there, does it? Not quite. They, they do actually share the same water. This one is about 20,000 gallons. So in here we have a lot of species from the Caribbean and Atlantic. Mm -hmm. um, we have some juvenile bonnethead sharks, mm -hmm. we have some southern stingrays, a couple sea trout, some pork fish. We also have the sea trout. Oh, I forgot to mention. Oh yeah, he's just chilling over there. Yeah. Is Portal that common leaves. behavior for a sea turtle? To... So she actually has some buoyancy issues. Um, that's why she's oriented like that. We're working on um, sort of a weight harness to counterbalance the buoyancy issues she's having so that she can swim around a little bit more naturally. And that's fairly common with aquariums is they'll take on, you know, rescue turtles or rescue sharks or any sort of like marine animal that needs to be cared for um, that ends up in the hands through the aquarium system, correct? Yeah, definitely. All, all of the sea turtles in public aquariums are deemed non-releasable. I've got a turtle at home. It's, um, it's a fly river turtle. One thing with Tortellini's habitat that went into the design of it, um, we have some skylights above with some 
I can't remember what it's called. Uh, they're made with a type of glass that allows UV to pass through it because UV is very important to sea turtle metabolism and making sure they can metabolize vitamin D. And, and what is the reason why sea turtles particularly are endangered? Is it something that we, they were over fishing them to, to utilize? Um, it it kind of depends on the species. So the Hawksbill sea turtle was overfished because of its shell. Okay, so Alex, this is a pretty massive uh, aquarium here. What size in gallons is this one? This is a little over 17,000 gallons. It's connected to some of the other habitats that we've seen already. Um, but this tank specifically is about 17,000. It kind of makes me think, I just I was going to guess about 17,000. I have an 18,000 gallon aquarium <laughs> at my house. So. so what I wanted to talk about here is your trunk fish here. I don't think I've seen very many of those in an aquarium, if, if I've seen any at all. It's kind of like a box fish or a cowfish, probably in those, those families. Yep, Tell exactly. Tell me more about your trunk fish here. So we have a spotted trunk fish. We actually have two in this habitat. Some of these species do secrete a toxin when they get stressed out. Oh, they do. Um, so it is something that you kind of have to watch out for. And that, that's similar with the boxfish inside of the home aquarium. Yep. That little boxfish can wipe out your whole aquarium. Yeah. Um, if you irritate it enough. They're slow swimmers. Don't compete well for food. So if you're going to get a boxfish, I've told you before, trunkfish, boxfish, cowfish, they're very difficult to take care of difficult to acclimate to the home aquarium. And as Alex was just saying, is they can release a toxin um, that in a small aquarium can, can wipe it out. It's in a 17,000 gallon habitat, but it's really 50, 60,000 gallons for the whole system because it's altogether. Because it's in. One of the reasons why you guys use the Fritz salt is because we make that salt special for aquariums like yours, use less than a certain part per million of bromide when you use ozone can turn that into bromate which will tank your ph yep. and cause a problem in the system and so ozone not really a recommended filtration system for the at-home hobbyists unless they really know what they're doing because a lot of salts will have high high bromide um which will then cause a ph uh drop in your system once you use the ozone well i do like that orange file fish uh one one thing that you don't see very often in home aquariums, you see like the Fiji file, which again, doesn't fare well in the home aquarium, best left on the reef. The orange file fish is probably not the best one for the home aquarium, just because of how picky they are. Very cool how you did all like the, the hole in the wall type of aquariums here. Uh, so people can kind of see an interesting look of it. Uh, this one's just filled with tangs and rabbit fish. Foxfish, I mean. Yep. This will eventually be our our coral reef habitat. Oh, okay. So we're still in the process of bringing in coral, getting them through quarantine, and then eventually we'll start to stock this. The clown tank. Now you see this a lot for sale in the retail store. They're not very expensive, um, but they don't fare well in the home aquarium. Uh, they need a lot of space to swim. They're fairly aggressive. They eat a lot because they're expending a lot of energy. Wouldn't be my recommendation for the beginner aquarist, maybe even uh, at all for an aquarist, unless you had a very large system and you knew what to do to take care of the clown tank. You wouldn't want to have anything smaller than probably a four or 500 gallon aquarium. But Anthony is another fish that very high energy swimming all the time, but needs to be fed three, four times a day. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They have very fast metabolisms. They can also be pretty aggressive with each other in tight spaces. So there's definitely like a social hierarchy among the antheas. These antheas here, like this is a male. Mm -hmm. um, Pink spot. Yep, you can tell by the spot on its side. Um, and then all the females are these sort of like lighter orangish yellow. These are snail eggs, correct? Yeah, those are some of the serious snail eggs. So the serious snails actually crawled up the glass, mm -hmm. even though they typically would stay down hidden under the sand. Yeah, we'll come in almost every day. In the morning, we'll find a new cluster of eggs. Even the blue linkia starfish here. Again, not really something I would suggest for the beginner hobbies who just started your uh, saltwater aquarium. They require a very particular way of being handled, even when you were to take them out of an aquarium uh, at a retail store, 
to put inside of the bag, you should use special care, a pair of gloves. The oil from your skin really bothers these Linkia stars. And so you kind of have to pick it up with either the plastic bag itself that you're gonna put it in, or use like a pair of gloves when, when handling these Linkia stars. Cool. All right, and this is the, oh, well, we first have to stop and talk about this because this is a design feature of this place that I thought was really cool. You can look up and see this aquarium here, and it's a, what, what type of fish are these? These are Palomita Jacks. Palomita Jacks. Yep. And they just constantly swim around in a circle, nonstop. And I like how you can look up and just see that um, from the middle of this room. I feel like it brings a lot of light into the center here. All right, now this is the showpiece of the Kansas City Aquarium, right? Yep. Is because uh, this is one side viewing area uh, of the uh, of the aquarium where you it kind of gives like a limitless uh, depth to it because it's got this convex uh, con that's concave okay <laughs> concave it depends on which angle you're looking at it from Jimmy I'm right either way okay how many feet this way does it go um, it goes about 40 50, 40, 50 feet. feet yeah that's what I think you said. But you do have like uh, some eels in here, red snapper, um, all sorts of different fish. Um, and you're diving in, in here daily, right? Yep. Four or five times a week right now. It, eventually it'll get to a point where staffing wise, we want to be diving in here every single day. This particular habitat has so many different species of fish. So feeding it can be pretty tricky because we're trying to accommodate to carnivores, herbivores, and omnivores. It's a beautiful aquarium, and this is this is the big boy, right? So this is how many gallons? Yeah, this one's about four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand. This is this is the one that, if you remember earlier in the video, Alex was challenging me. I know I'm not quite at your level yet, uh, Alex, but I'm working on it. Um, I don't have any sharks myself. I don't have any eels either. What type of you eel really is this? You have an eighteen thousand gallon aquarium. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> so this is the second of two viewing angles of the, or second of three viewing second angles. Second of three, yeah. Yeah, I see a number of different types of fish, like some gold rim uh, tangs in here, similar to the powder brown, but not. We have some flamingi tangs. Yeah, this is very cool. And then this is kind of the showpiece of the entire facility, right? Wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, definitely. One of them. Not your favorite? It's either, it's either this or the, the, the eel cone. Oh, the eel cone. Yeah, yeah that is really cool. We haven't gotten there yet. Uh, spoiler alert, we're gonna go look at an eel cone. Now this is difficult to clean too, right? Because of... Yeah, this, this t probably takes the divers about 30 minutes, just this piece of acrylic to clean. Those are some good divers. I mean, it takes me 30 minutes to clean just the front piece of my <laughs> aquarium glass. Probably because I let the algae get kind of tough on it. I use my scraper a little bit more often. Um, so you got five sharks in here, correct? Yeah, we have five sharks, all male. Um, we have four sand tiger sharks, which are these ones right here. And then we have one sandbar shark. Um, usually see him swimming around. For a diver that goes down in this aquarium. Mm -hmm. Is sharks scary or not? No. Not at all. Not at all. And these are, I think when I was talking with you in Austin the other night, you really wanted to be able to get that fierce look of like uh, the more aggressive sharks, but these aren't that aggressive. Uh, they do look pretty aggressive, but they're actually, they have a pretty chill demeanor. We do have one person that's designated as a, like a shark tender or shark spotter. So their job during the dive is to just make sure that the divers and the sharks aren't gonna cross paths. Uh, that way the people that are cleaning the rocks or, or cleaning the acrylic can focus on their task. The divers favorite thing about this exhibit is that they drop their teeth very regularly. Uh -huh. They're constantly replacing their teeth. So divers will find sand tiger teeth in here all the time. 
really cool ch uh, tip for all of you, Fritz fam at home. If you are taking photography classes or you want to get started in being a master in photography, this is the best place to start, wouldn't you say, Alex? Yeah, these are by far the most photogenic jellyfish. Right, and so if you really want to feel good about your Instagram or your photography skills, and you just kind of right here, and then boom, okay? Master in photography, A plus right there. <laughs> These are like the spider crabs, right? Yep, these are the Japanese spider crabs. So this is one of our deep sea habitats. Now this is cold water exhibit. I can tell by uh, kind of the anemones that you've caught here. Where is this look? A lot of kind of P and W Pacific Northwest Ocean area. Yeah, a lot of the anemones are are from that region. This is cool. Continue on with the cold water thing, but you have the more colorful anemones in here. Yeah, and these red ones. This is our octopus habitat, but neither of them oh, are out right we now. We got amazing that. footage of the octopus last yeah. time. Yeah, because they were out. Remember, they were, both of them were out. Yeah. Remember? And we yeah, got yeah. Them. It was rare. It's yeah. rare that they're both out. Yeah. Yeah, we got it. We got it. I'll show it to you right now. Oh, dude. These these were up in the, uh, they were the top in last time. Yeah, they these were in quarantine awesome. last time. Oh, Look, we've... Yeah. So they were in quarantine last time we were here. They yeah. particularly liked me more than anyone. I try to make a deal with Alex, just a little exchange. It's very frowned on in the public aquarium community to do any sort of sharing of animal. I found that out very quickly when I tried to make a deal for these. But tell me about these. <laughs> um, so these are ornate boxfish from Southern Australia. So this is a temperate habitat. That is a male. The males have a little bit more like bright colors. Their, the pattern on their tail is a little more distinct. The shape of their rostrum is also a little bit different from the female, so it's a little more rounded up top. Now these, you won't see these in the trade either, right? No, I've never seen these. I, oh. They're very cold water. They're not oh. very cold water, but I mean, this this is about 60, 63 degrees or so. I do an aquarium just for these yeah. boys. Yeah. All right, Alex. This, now you showed me this last time, but this is the most interesting thing. And I think my favorite thing you have is this entire facility. I, I, I don't know what it is about it. Maybe it's just because it doesn't quite fit in kind of reminds me of myself. Uh, but this is your monkey face prickleback right here. Yep, this is the monkey face prickleback. It gets a lot of comparisons to our wolf eels. Uh, we have one, one wolf eel in the kelp forest and one in the eel cylinder. Unlike the wolf eels, this is actually a vegetarian, which right. is also very surprising to a lot of people. Like me, all I eat is salad and vegetables. Probably doesn't get very big, does it? No, it doesn't get much bigger than this. This is well, I would consider this a full grown. We have a bunch of mussels, scallops, some rock scallops in there. The monkey face prickleback is actually in the same same order as the lionfish. The lionfish? Yeah. No way. Cool. I need to see that chart. <laughs> How did it get there? <laughs> I want to sponsor this tank. I want to call this monkey face prickleback Fritz. Go for it. All right. You let me know. Draw up the paperwork. We're going to make the All deal. Right. This is going to be Fritz the monkey face prickleback. And trade you a couple bags of salt. Yeah, and some turbo star, even some Vitalis. Some, all right, yeah, deal. stuff I can deal here. <laughs> UMB Bank already is sponsoring. Oh, UMB Bank, that's it? I got friends in higher places in them. <laughs> we could work, I'll call UMB, we'll get this all worked out real quick. Touch tanks, uh, sea lions, sea otters. We have this facility, Stingray touch tank. Um, and then we have a couple more systems over in the Penguin Plaza. Lots to see here, especially Fritz, the monkey face prickleback. In all seriousness, come and check out the Kansas City Zoo and Aquarium. Ask for Alex. Uh, we're gonna put his cell phone number at the very bottom here. You can call him anytime, any question, day or night. He really likes to take your questions. Uh, come and ask for Alex when you come over here to the Kansas City no, Zoo and no. Aquarium. <laughs> He, uh, he has all the time in the world. <laughs> We're just gonna redo that. <laughs> okay, definitely come over and check out the Kansas City Zoo and Aquarium. Brand new facility, just opened up September 1st, 2023. Definitely comment down below. What did you like to see here at the Kansas City Zoo? Remember the charity? Uh, definitely you can donate to the Kansas City Zoo and Aquarium and all the things that they're doing. Uh, also talked about sea turtles, tons of charities for them. Until then, comment down below. Let me know what you would like me to see next. Next time. Nailed it!